Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Okay, everyone, uh, this is Ted Thomas, and the name of this uh, podcast is Imagine Wealth Without Risk, and we're glad to have you all here. As you all know, I'm the expert on tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property, but uh, this podcast isn't just about tax lien certificates and tax deeds. It's really about building wealth and building income for the future. And so I'm fortunate today to have a, a special guest, and her name is uh, Dixie Decker. And uh, Dixie, let's you and I have some fun today and talk about the unusual business that you have. So before we talk about money, tell people who you are and what you do and about your family and a few things, because so they, they'll know you're a real person and all that. Uh, sure. I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate I can watch you on a video, but they're not able to do that. And I think you have the biggest watch in the world. Is that true? Or, is that, or does someone yeah, have you, Absolutely. Look at that. You can text and email from it. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, I like that. So you fit right in my office here because in the next room, you haven't met her yet, but Kim has a watch. She doesn't have a glamorous band on hers, but she has a big watch like that. And every yeah. two seconds, she's every time we're talking, she's going like this. So I have to stop <laughs> talking so she can take a phone call. So Dixie, welcome to my call. I'm certainly happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about me. Um, here from Springfield, Missouri, and we have honed in on the niche of student housing. Okay. And uh, that sounds as crazy as it is, and as many people think, oh my God, I would never ever want to invest in that kind of house or real estate. It's one of the most risk free rental properties that I believe you could own. There's a lot of reasons for that. We'll talk about it, I'm sure. But just in 2013, I was divorced, bankrupt, single mom. I've got two kiddos that are now 16 and 11. And they're putting us through the ringer as teenagers, but they're really great girls. And we're just doing what we're doing. And so we have a little over 300 tenants now that rent from us. And the average room rental rate is a little over $500 a head. And wow. so for a girl that came from nothing has bounced back. And when we have this next correction in the market or recession, people are going to go back to college. They're going to still be renting my houses. And I'm pretty excited about that method. Oh, so it sounds like you built a lot of security into your life. But tell us about you. You must have a, a family, mom and dad, and uh, they live close by. Uh, um, are they working people or farmers or what do they do? Yes, yeah, so we're from the Ozarks. and Oh, the Ozarks. I know we're that. Really, we're really not country, but we're a little country. Mom and dad are both retired. I couldn't do any of what I do without my mother. She really is the backbone by being there for the kiddos and picking them up from school and allowing me to now travel and teach and speak. And they still have a great person helping take care of them. Uh -huh. And then I have two awesome twin sisters that are one year younger than me. You can imagine life with three girls and there was no competition in that household at all. Oh, oh I'll bet <laughs> there was no competition. Oh, and your dad survived it, is that right? Or he, I hope he did. He survived so far. Three girls, he survived three girls? <laughs> three oh girls. my, then he's being elected for sainthood, right? And we all played sports. And we all did very well in school. Both of my sisters are now nurse practitioners. And oh, how nice. They have the gift of caring for people. And okay. we all live within about two miles of each other. Even though we were all going to leave home and never come back, we all stayed together. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, so we go to the lake a lot on the, with the kids and the sisters and my parents. And so we spend a lot of time together. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this is a more than typical Midwest family then, because this is really the heart of America where you live. And you talked about the Ozarks. So, so I know, but I want you to tell people just briefly about the Ozarks and the lake and whatever. You just referred to it as normal, but that's an especially beautiful part of the world. I know that yeah. because I was there years ago. But t tell people just briefly about that. I know yeah. we're supposed to do business, but people like yeah. to know. It, yeah. It's a gorgeous place. It's gorgeous, but everyone that's here never wants to stay here because it, it feels small town. But we, we have four seasons every year. The lake is about 30 minutes from us. And people that come here from all over the country to Branson, Missouri, right. um, they say that it's one of the cleanest, most beautiful lakes they've ever seen. 
Oh, absolutely. Um, there's some great places down there. The Chateau, which we take the kids over there by boat to have ice cream in their pajamas. Oh, there's wow. Top of the Rock, and that's a beautiful resort for people to visit. Uh -huh. Whether it's in the summer, spring, or fall, it's gorgeous. It's just, a, it's a really neat place to live. Springfield, people call it a college town. Oh, yeah. In truth, I never finished college. So for me, it was never a college town until I started doing student housing. <laughs> oh my God. All right, I'm going to get down to business. But before I do that, tell me about how big the Lake of the Ozarks is. Oh my gosh. I don't know how big that lake is. I'm by Table Rock Lake and it's a little calmer area, not as much partying. So a little bit more family based. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know how big it is. You could have a thousand boats on that lake easily, couldn't you? Oh, and not sure. even know they were there. Yeah. I'm sure. It's, yeah. it's pretty large. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's hundreds of miles or thousands of miles of shoreline. I know that. That's yeah. a wonderful place. All right. Let's get down to business because we're supposed to be talking about business because this podcast is all about wealth building. And you yeah. certainly have not only created some wealth, but you've been able to do it without having to put out thousands and thousands of dollars. You've, been yeah. able to, you've recreated, you basically recreated something that everybody hates. <laughs> is that is that true don't be until you I teach them what you teach yes. I mean, everybody says tenants oh my god i know one tenant but you've redefined you rewrote the book didn't you yeah i i think so especially with the college students and any landlord that has tenants i think there's a lot of golden nuggets they leave my events with and my yeah. teachings and they're like why wasn't i doing that before and yeah. really i think landlords become victims of their tenants Yes. Instead of setting the expectations and making the rules, they okay. let the tenants make the rules. And that's yeah. not how we do business. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you certainly do business. So before we get to that business, describe to someone what uh, student housing would be. Could we refine that down to start? Would you start with one house and do it that way? Would that be the way to explain it? Or how do you yes. do that? For me, the word student housing is what we use in this world when we're talking to people that are in real estate. But truthfully, student housing for me is just single family rentals. And I only have one lease on each house, but it's a group of friends that like each other most of the time. Oh. And instead of them signing a lease for just their room rate, I make them sign one lease for the whole house's rent. That way they're wow. all jointly responsible for making sure I'm paid. I don't care if Joe drops out of school and leaves the house, the other tenants are responsible for finding someone to replace him and making sure I get paid all of my rent. Wow. So, yeah, so in other bigger college towns, the word student housing usually means to people these big apartment buildings, right. almost like dorms. And for me, that's not what it is. For me, it's a single family house. It's a duplex. It's a triplex. I do now have my first apartment building, but oh. it doesn't have to be those big buildings. So okay. for me, as a, a working girl who is bankrupt and divorced, one little house with students in it was spinning off six to eight hundred dollars net cash flow and wow. that was pretty life changing for me in that situation so i only needed three or four of those to quit my day job <laughs> Oh, listen, that's you know? a terrific thing. That's true. Now, you did mention to me when we were before we came on the podcast that you have devised and thought out this collection of rent process. And like you said you a minute ago, you rent the whole house to that individual, and, but all the individuals are responsible. So I thought that was quite good. But didn't you do something else about the parents also? Yes, yeah, so I make the parents co-sign on that lease as well. So wow. that a regular landlord in Missouri, in the Ozarks, let's say, the big fear for me was it's December, it's Christmas time, it's snowing, or it's an ice storm. One of my tenants in a regular single family rental loses their job or gets laid off. They've got kids they need to buy Christmas for. And guess who's not getting paid rent? Wow. Me, the landlord, right? And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I could never kick somebody out in the ice storm at Christmas time with kids. No, way. no And way. I don't want to be that kind of landlord. 
And so with student housing, I have one lease, but I may have three or four students on that lease and three or four sets of parents on that lease. I'm getting paid. Somebody's paying me no matter what, because these parents are usually they've been planning for their kids college for years. And so they're good income earners. They're wanting their credit to stay good. So they're not going to not pay me. (laughs) So this all, so that works. That really works. Absolutely. And I do a 12 month lease. So I'm never vacant. I have no evictions in student housing and I don't know what other kind of landlord you'd want to be. Wow, that's terrific. All right, so you rent this for the full year. No no student coming in and then leaving in June and leaving you without rent all the way until next September, October. So they have to pay all year, whether they stay there or not. So when they go home, so they still have to pay the rent. Wow. Right. And if they don't pay, their parents pay. Wow. Boy, that solved a lot of economic problems, didn't it? There okay. you go. All right. So now you buy this house and and it's going to cash flow, did you say six or $800 a month? Sure. That's my goal as a minimum that I want to cash flow on a student housing property. Wow. And what most landlords around here on a single family rental, I've heard it in tons of across the country, not just here, really across the country. I hear landlords say hundred, two hundred dollars net cash flow. That's what they're going for. And I'm thinking, holy crap, if you have to fix one thing, you don't cash flow for the whole year. What are you doing this for? Yeah, one refrigerator changed all that. You're done. Oh, my goodness. Well, I never could understand the rental business unless it was a big (laughs) apartment property. Really. Actually, I teach people to buy and quickly sell. Whatever it is, sell it to a fixer-upper person, sell it to a person like yourself, whatever. Don't try to be in that rental business because it's a big job. Okay, now how... How much administration, it sounds like you've got it nailed down, but you certainly must have to do some administration. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes. Now, it's changed over time, of course, but when we when I first started, I did everything, and then I hired my first assistant to start managing those tenants, oh. and now the business model globally is, a, we have a construction business, so I have one guy that runs that business. I have the speaking, teaching, training business. And so my personal assistant helps with that business. And then in the rental business, I have one girl who does all of that. And my personal assistant will help her in the busy season. And that's it. Well, okay. So you're really not a tycoon, but you are a tycoon. So you get, is that three assistants you have? Three. They come in part-time or full-time or how does that work out? Some of them are full-time, and then oh, yeah. the third gal, during the fall, when her kids go back to school, she works 9.30 to 3.30, Monday oh. through Friday, and oh. then in the summer, when they're out of school, she works 9 to 5. I see. Okay. So she's part right. time, but then full-time. Okay. okay. All right, so now we have a house that's making, generating for you $800 a month, you said, right? Yep. Net okay. cash flow. So at the end of the year, that's about $10,000 just for one house, right? Okay. Okay. So round numbers. All right. So if you did five of those, you got $50,000 a year in income. Right. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. It's, I think a lot of females would be pretty happy with that. Uh, I think a lot of males would be happy with that, but yeah, females it, too. It, exactly. <laughs> I know there's just an awful lot of women, which it's a sign of our times that are bringing up two kids, but they're doing it alone. I'm, I, I talk about that a lot because uh, some people just don't take care of the responsibilities of their own children. So It's true. And that's been one of my missions this year is to just, I don't want to exclude men by any means, but I've honed in on this like women supporting women concept because Good. often it's so contagious to beat down another woman because you want to feel better about your own situation. Right. But it's been really awesome to watch so many women that I've started a little group that we meet once a month and they have just started to flourish and step out of their comfort zone when no one else is there to say, go for it. And anybody that's listening, I was, I, I think I probably said this to you before we got on this podcast, In 2013, I wasn't just in the hole. I was below the dirt. And so there is hope out there for you. My life, I call it my previous life, was I was with my ex-husband for 15 years total. There ended up being, he had a drug problem, an alcohol problem. He mentally, physically, emotionally abused me. 
And I said no more. There was other women in the marriage I didn't know about. And so I know somebody that's listening or when I'm traveling and teaching, there's somebody in that room every single time that just needs hope and that there oh. is more out there for you if you go for it. Goodness. And when you're below the dirt, you don't have anything to lose. So go for it. I like your attitude. That's a nice message for people. Really a good message. All right. Two things. I want you to do it slowly because people are driving the car now and mm -hmm. they, they might come back. Hopefully they'll come back and listen, but <laughs> I, I want them to have your contact information. Do you mind giving me that uh, contact information? Cause, and then we'll talk just a little bit. I know you teach this. So let's do those two things and then we'll come back to talking about the nitty gritties of the business. Would that be all right? Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. give your contact information first. Yes, yeah, so they can go online to DixieDecker.com, and that's D is in Delta, I-X-I-E, D is in Delta, E-C-K-E-R.com, and, or they can call the office and talk to Whitney, my assistant, that's 417-651-5100, and uh, of course, I'm on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, so search me out there, Queen of Student Housing. Queen of um, Student Housing. There you Is go. That's your moniker. Name, right? Oh my goodness. Okay, good. Did you trademark that? I hope you trademarked. Yes. Yes, okay, and uh, Mr. The reason of that is Mr. Ron Legrand decided that I was now the queen of student housing when he okay. figured out what I was doing down here in Springfield, yeah. Missouri. That's and it great. Stuck. <laughs> okay. 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 I love that. Okay. All right. So now let's, let's talk about the nitty gritties of this business. Where do you find the property? Obviously I'll have to be around the schools. Yes. When I first started, I had done that training with my mentor and prior to 2013, I only knew what traditional real estate was. So when I went to this training on how to buy houses with no money, no credit, like that late night infomercial that sounds super cheesy, I went to that and I learned so much about buying houses. And so oh. I didn't know what a lease option was. I didn't know what wholesaling was. I didn't know what owner financing was and private lending. So I, I learned those. And when I left, I dropped mail and signs all over this city. And I didn't care what I picked up at that time. And I ended up picking up a house near campus and couldn't sell it on a rent to own program. And so I remembered my now fiance, who's actually been my best friend since seventh grade. Wow. He had, yeah, so he had gotten out of the military and they give those guys that like GI money and to come back and go to school. And so he had done that and we had lunch one day and he had mentioned that he was going to rent this house out to college kids that he had. And I'm like, that's insane. It's exactly, absolutely insane. Exactly. Yeah. And then he's the one that told me what they were paying per month. And I said, oh, I can do math. Why don't we try that? <laughs> you said that to him? <laughs> Why well, don't we try that with this house I can't get rid of? Because nobody wanted to buy the house because they were only going to go to school for a year or two. Right. And so in that first year, I wholesaled and lease optioned about 37 houses. And 37 houses in one year? Yeah. So I quit my day job. Oh, can't understand why. Yeah. Wow. And, and then. That's one a week, for going to say. Oh, my. And so I did those all over the city because I didn't know what the hell I was doing back then. I just oh. was doing what I could do. Right. And so once we like put college kids in this one house that I had lease optioned. I didn't even own it. And they're paying rent. I'm like, this is it. This is how we're going to create passive income forever. Because when you're wholesaling houses, you have to work every day to make a deal to pay the bills. And I thought- That doesn't get rich like they tell you on television. I, I see those guys on television. You buy one today and you get it sold tomorrow and they fix it up and it's so glamorous. It isn't television after all. But then it's done and the, and the money is done and you have to go find another house. And so oh. all you're doing is taking one, you're quitting your day job to create another job. And quite frankly, that job is probably more hours than the 40 you were putting in at the day job. And so after we figured out you could put college kids in these houses you didn't even own, I said, let's do more, more of those. And so then it was just a matter of targeting around the campus. I probably buy within about a mile of my campus. Oh, yeah. I only have 24,000 kids enrolled in college here. 24,000. So, 
And so like Ohio State is 60,000. So their campus is much larger. Yeah. But here's the key for people that are interested in student housing. There's 24,000 kids enrolled, but there's only 4,000 that can live in the dorms. So every wow. year, I have 20,000 kids looking for a place to live. Wow. Right? So that was the key factor of, yeah, this is where we're going to invest, right? And so we just kept buying lease option and owner financing, and we found private lenders. And so some of them, we buy really crappy houses and fix them up like they do on HGTV, but it's not nearly as uh, fun as what it shows on there. And then oh, so they don't that. have a beautiful blonde there with get uh, long <laughs> fingernails running a chainsaw or some darn thing, ch- taking a tree down. They don't have that, no, right? No, no, it's, And it's, then we keep it long term, oh. put the college kids in it, and they still cash flow. They're just cash cows. Wow. And so now the question has become, if I want to never make another real estate deal the rest of my life, I can stop. Wow. I don't have to work if I don't want to. Once you start this, you're addicted and you just keep doing it. (laughs) So you're a a working girl, you're a hardworking woman, right? You keep doing it, so good for you. You keep doing it. Yeah, what's wrong with that? You can uh, get your kids a nice start in life. They're young now and they'll go to any college they want to go, won't they? Yeah, Yeah. or anyone that you want them to go to anyway. (laughs) Absolutely, and and the cool thing is we can travel now. If we take off a couple weeks and go to the Florida house, we can do that. If we need to be there for family, we've had some family members get sick and there's a lot that comes with that. So you think you do this business for the shiny objects and for the fun. And what I've realized is we've created security for our family so that when the bad things happen, we still have money coming in. Because when you take off a month to take care of a family member or liquidate their assets because there's a, somebody passed away or you, whatever that is, you don't go back to a day job. You're usually fired when you miss that much work. Yes. And when next week I have surgery on my neck because I have two herniated discs oh. and I'm not worried if my boss is going to fire me because I need more time off to heal. And that's pretty cool. When you go to Thanksgiving dinner, it's a party. <laughs> It's a party. Everybody in your family wants to know what you're doing, don't they? They don't care. They think I sit on the couch and eat potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. You just show up in the biggest truck or the biggest car, and they know that this girl's got some money. Is that how it is? Okay, that's nice. They can't figure it out. They can't figure it out. Okay. And they gotta be. they got to be pretty proud of you. Yeah, I think they're pretty proud. And when we started this conversation about my family, we're, it was, I was raised very traditional. You get married, you stay married, thick or thin, doesn't matter. You yeah. go to college, you get your degree, you get the corporate job, you have the retirement. And I failed every single one of those. It's and not- so I, I say I'm the black sheep of the family, but the truth is it has made me who I am today. Yeah. And my parents were very much against me getting divorced until they realized what I was going through. Yes. And so as of today, they say that was the best thing you ever did was starting your life over. Oh, yeah, that makes you feel good. You. Oh, yeah. uh, finally, redemption, right? Yeah, yeah. After going through all that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to the positive. So yeah. you did mention you just slid right by it. You didn't <laughs> buy all these houses. Yeah. It was houses you did this and you didn't even buy them. Is that right? Now, what did you do there? So those, so there's two things. Uh, One, you can just lease option it from somebody, which for the listeners that maybe haven't been through some training, you're basically just renting a house and you have the option to buy it sometime down the road. Okay. And what I tell my sellers that I'm talking to is that I'm putting highly qualified tenants in these houses and I don't have any more for them. So I, I would love to make a payment to you and put highly qualified tenants into the house. And it, they are highly qualified tenants. They've got their parents on board. So you right. don't have to explain that part. You're just letting them know you have highly qualified tenants. And wow. then if you don't want the option to buy it, you just rent the darn house. You don't ever have to buy it. So oh, you can terrific. do it that way. Yeah. So you can actually get into business and not have a lot of money. I had below zero dollars. 
That's amazing. That's Whatever amazing. that number is, I don't know yeah, what it is. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the average house is uh, netting you eight hundred bucks a month. Boy, that's a that's really an asset. What else would you like to? What else would you like my listeners to know? I, you're certainly building wealth. Did yeah. you say you have thirty of these now or twenty? I can't remember the number. Oh my gosh, I have a little over three hundred tenants. So I don't oh. count. I don't count properties. I count heads. <laughs> Oh, so you count rental payments. So each tenant is $500. Is that what right. it was? Yeah, oh, my God. So you now the cash flow for the month. And let's right. say I got two girls to take care of here and the rest is for you. Right. Okay. Wow. And you yes. can do this with somebody else's house as well as you do it with your own. Okay. So that's why you had the construction guys to buy your own once in a while and, and build building more wealth that way. Yes. Wow. So, uh, okay. um, and, and you know, uh, any deal that I structure, I think this is important. If, if I can get owner financing or lease options in place, my goal is to also get their equity pay down from whatever their loan is. So uh, over the course of time, you have your positive cash flow coming in, but then you have these highly qualified tenants and their parents paying down your mortgages, whether it's to a banker, a private lender, a seller. Oh. In the end, in, in 15, 20 years, how much net worth have you built for yourself? Huge. And so that's the risk control for me is the parents, the, the students that are never going to quit going to college. And then we're creating net worth and we're creating positive cash flow. Whether we're on the beach, we're in the office, or we're in the hospital, we've got money coming in. Nice. Really nice. Wow. That's got to give you a nice feeling inside. You got to be feeling really secure about yourself and where you're going in the future. Really, uh, this, is a, this is a great story. I'm, I'm so glad we connected and you were able to share this with us. This is really something. All right. So give me a little insider information because you are one and I'm not singling out you especially by yourself. Other women have struggled to some other things. And we mentioned it a little earlier that yes, there's hope, but what should a woman expect. Now, I'm not looking for a lot of negatives or anything, but <laughs> what I am looking for is a, a woman going into business. You were a homemaker before you did this, right? Uh, I had a day job making $30,000 a year. Okay. Before All that, right. while I was married, I got my realtor's license and I listed oh, yeah. a couple of my ex-husband's houses that he framed and built. Oh. But I never really did never moved anything forward. I was really good at uh, running other people's businesses and yeah. growing wealth for them because I knew how to work oh. really hard. Yeah. I knew how to work really hard. That was part of that. You, you had that race. Midwest attitude that you work hard, you get rewarded. Right. Uh, sometimes you really don't get rewarded, but it sounded good, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. So what was the, uh, for, for, for the males that are listening, they listen, but they don't believe. But the women are going to believe. So tell me what the difference in you, how did you change? Now, you didn't have to become a guy with a, a, a gun belt on and shooting guns. You had to think things out. So what did you think differently after you did one and then you did two? Mm -hmm. and pretty quick, you, were, you knew you could build an empire. Yes. So I think the two things that... You have to have, no matter what business you're building, growing, working towards, or even in corporate America, is one, and, and especially being a single mom doing this, you have the home life you're juggling, you have the entrepreneur life you're juggling. For me, it was two things. I'm very organized and I have systems for everything. Oh. Systems. And so for the guys listening... If you have training that you've gotten from somebody, a mentor, I highly believe in mentors, yes. don't reinvent the wheel. Do exactly what they tell you to do, and you're going to get similar results to what they got. And so often people learn your tax strategies, tax deeds, right? And then they go and they're like, I bet I can do it better. I'm going to reinvent yeah, yeah, yeah. this and I'm going to do it this way. And yeah. then guess what? In five years, they've made no dollars and it's all your fault because they didn't follow your system, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so for me, it's systems, it's a mentor. Good. Good. And then the bottom line is, do you have the grit to go for it? Now, what does that mean? You have the grit. What does that mean? The grit. To, to me, it is the never give up. It's the crawl, walk, scrape climb whatever you have to do to keep moving every day 
I'm giving you a new middle name. You want a new middle name for you? Okay. And the new middle name, it's Dixie Determined Decker. There you go. There you that go. You? That yeah. sounds like you every minute I talk to you. What a yeah. wonderful interview this is. This is really great. What would you like to sign off with? We've got about 30 seconds left. What would you like to tell people? Oh, have we told them enough about you? How do they contact you? Let's sign off with your contact information because yeah. I, I do want people that, that want you, you and mind them calling you or, or calling your yeah. number with your assistant or something like that or using yeah, your website. So, yeah. 417-651-5100, or you can go to DixieDecker.com and check us out on social media, YouTube. I've got a bunch of videos out there, Facebook, Instagram, Queen of Student Housing. You'll find me. Okay. And uh, I say my last word is just go after your dreams. Keep dreaming big and go for it. Okay. Now, I want to add a little to what you said. Uh, first, I want to say thank you. But you do teach classes and you do a, a seminar at least once a year, right, that people could yep. attend? Could they learn enough at one seminar? Or do they have to get a course or, or what do they have to do? Yes. Yeah, so if they want to come to uh, one, one of my live events, they also get an at-home study program that goes with that. So they've oh. got everything they need to move forward. So I have a lot of people that leave the event and they start dabbling in it themselves. And then usually they want to be around like-minded people. Right. And a lot of people will take the next step and join the mastermind group so that they have help all year long in their first year. But absolutely, if they want to go for it with just the boot camp training, they can do it. The more successful ones stick around for the mastermind group. And then they have me for a whole year to help guide them in that student housing adventure. And it's a lot of fun. So my, my other big thing is you got to work hard and play hard. And when they come down here to my event, I bust everybody to Branson for a cool show. And, uh, so we have a little bit of fun too, not just all work. <laughs> okay. Listen, this has been a terrific interview. I, I want to thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure. It, uh, it goes quickly when, when yeah. you're, everybody's interested, and you just did an absolutely terrific job across the airways. Thank you very much. It was really a great interview. And let's thank look you. forward to getting together again very soon, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, okay, there she goes. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, this is Linda. Don't forget, you can listen to more episodes at tedthomaspodcast.com. You can also listen to Imagine Wealth Without Risk on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. 